Hi, I'm Doug, and this is the Apogee Quartet, the world's first professional multi-channel audio interface for the iPad. And to demonstrate the breadth of this unit, we're going to break this video down into a couple of different sections. First of all, we're going to talk about the paradigm shift this unit really represents, and that it's the only Mac-centric audio interface you can use interchangeably with just about any desktop, laptop, or iOS Mac device to record music virtually anywhere you make it. Very cool. Then we're going to talk about the feature set of the unit in combination with the bundled Maestro application. Then finally, we're going to do a mini tutorial kind of deconstructing the audio sessions from a series of 15-second Instagram videos we did with Apogee to promote this unit. And that's going to give you some insight into how I was able to use this unit in combination with some of the most popular apps out there to engage a pretty discerning audience with very positive results, which is kind of ultimately what we want to do, right? We want to use our craft to engage an audience and have them enjoy what we're doing. And this unit makes it super easy to do that. So let's dig in. So as I mentioned before, this unit really represents a pretty radical shift in paradigm. For a couple of key reasons. First of all, the ability to kind of have what I refer to as a round trip solution that enables you to use one audio interface between all these different devices is tremendously powerful. But really there's kind of a whole other layer here that is really specific to the iPad. While everybody knows the iPad is a very powerful piece of technology, most of us have never actually multi-tracked audio in real time with low latency on one of these devices. And that's where this unit really shines. So let's take a closer look at the feature set. The back of the quartet features a ton of I.O. that's extremely well organized. The analog in section features four combination quarter inch XLR input jacks. The analog out section allows you to gain outputs one and two, three and four, and five and six into three separate stereo pairs so you can toggle between three sets of monitors or gang them all together for 5.1 audio for film. Very convenient. The optical inputs in combination with word clock means you can take full advantage of a unit like my Focusrite Octopre Mark II Dynamic 8-channel mic pre so you can track drums for real. The mini USB connector connects and powers your iPad without an adapter and bears Apple's MFI certification. The MIDI USB jack can be used for a controller like my M-Audio O2 and the tie-down means that you're not actually going to unplug the power to your quartet. So once you connect to the quartet to the iPad and launch the Maestro application, the face of the quartet effectively functions like a control surface with metering, which makes for a great workflow. Super easy to control the audio inputs as well as the headphone and speaker outputs by selecting the appropriate touchpad and simply turning the controller wheel. It's that easy. You can also map a ton of great functions to touchpads A, B, and C from within Maestro, which is one of the things we'll talk about as we take a deeper look at that app. So once you've launched the Maestro application and selected the Quartet as your input device, the first view is the input view. And you can also select the output, mixer 1, mixer 2, device settings, and routing views to add extensive functionality to the massive I.O. on the back of the Quartet. We're going to start off by taking a look at the input view. As you look from left to right, the first four channel strips correspond to the four analog inputs on the back of the Quartet and 8 at 1 through 8 correspond to the light pipe inputs. Now the channel strips offer a huge range of flexibility, including the ability to select plus 4 or minus 10 line level to use your own mic pre's if you want to. But if you select mic or instrument, you're able to use the fantastic mic pre's found natively in the quartet. I would suggest always using the soft limiter. Helps prevent digital overages, which is something you never want. And this obviously is where you're going to adjust the input level and you're going to monitor it from there. Now using the minus and plus signs allow you to bump the level up or down, 1 dB at a time. Very convenient to just have that level of control there. Very smart. You can also flip the phase if you want to or assign things to group. Very convenient. As we look at mic 2 and mic 3, I've done something here that I want to point out. Let's say that this was the top of a snare and the bottom of a snare, or the front of an AC30 and the back of an AC30. I've got them both set for mic, got soft limiter on. If you look, when I bring these levels up or down, they're going to work in tandem. That's because I've got them both assigned to group one. Now what's really cool is this is really well thought through in that if I want to flip the phase of just one of the mics, in this case the bottom of the snare or the back of the AC30, I can do that even though they're still grouped. Very smart. And if only one of those mics is powered by phantom power, I can choose whichever one I want to associate phantom power to. Very smart, very functional, very well done. Alright, let's take a look at the output view. 
The first thing that I noticed about the output view was the separate channel strips for headphones and speakers, which really enables you to have a phenomenal tracking experience that's not tethered to your mixing experience. So you want to use your headphones to test your mix in mono to make sure there isn't any phase cancellation. You don't have to do that on your mains to do that. This is a big deal. You have the ability to mute, dim, or again, test for phase coherency on both of those independently. And if you want to go from one set of speakers to three, this is where you do it. And we talked before about the six different outputs on the back of the quartet. This is where you adjust those levels, both in terms of the type of level those speakers want to see, as well as the level of the pairs. So you can basically match the levels of your different speaker sets. As you toggle between them, it means that one set is a little bit louder, you bring the level down here. One set that's quieter, you can bring it up a little bit higher here. The set that's kind of in between, you can make that adjustment there and fine tune this as you're going. This makes for a phenomenal recording experience. All right, let's check out the mixers. Toggling between mixer one and mixer two allows you to see that they're effectively identical which means in the routing section I can do some very cool stuff. Mixer 1 I've got going to my main stereo outputs. Mixer 2 I've routed to the headphone left and right output, which means I can basically take where my kick drum would be on ADAT1 and goose that such that when I toggle between listening to the speakers and then tracking, my kick drum is much louder in my headphones so I can really play my parts really in time. Take a listen if I didn't nail my part. Without having to do anything I can put my headphones back on and I've got my kick drum just where I want it. That is all about workflow. All right, let's check out device settings. The device settings view is where you map control surface functionality from the maestro to the face of the quartet. I'm using touchpad A to clear the meters, touchpad B to dim all the outputs, and touchpad C to take all the outputs, you guessed it, to mono. I always want to test for phase everywhere. But say I wanted to use that touchpad to toggle between speaker sets one and two. It's that easy to do it, and that easy to go back. This is all about workflow, which is what makes this application so great. Before we deconstruct the production process on the tracks you just heard, there are a couple of really important things to point out. The Apogee folks wanted to make sure that whatever I recorded had a really kind of organic nature that allowed you to hear the sound of the instruments as much, if not more, than any of the plugins that I was using. And the A to D converters and the mic pre's and the quartet really did a great job of doing that. As we kind of deconstruct the tracks, you'll hear me talking about hearing the nuance of the fingers on the strings on the bass track. The fact that my Nash Telly actually just sounds like my Nash Telly. An incredibly transparent recording process that really allows you to capture the essence of what's coming in. Pretty fantastic. The other thing is, is it's a very fast recording process. As much as I talked about the ability to use multiple mixers, for what I did for these sessions, it was very straightforward. It was me going straight into the quartet, into the iPad, and tracking into Aurea, and monitoring out of Aurea through my speakers. That was it. So the thing about this process compared to working in Pro Tools on my iMac, it's just way faster. Uh, you know, as much as I love being able to use my fancy mic pre's and do all these things that I can do, by the time I've worked with the different mics and got tones on the amps and got my parts in place, time has passed. And the great thing about this process, it's incredibly efficient. The tones are every bit as good as what I get on my iMac, and it's totally portable. This is an amazing recording experience. All right, let's deconstruct those tracks. So interestingly enough, the whole production process started on my iMac in GarageBand. Although I'm not the biggest GarageBand fan or user in the world, there are some great drum loops in there. So I basically harvested the loop, exported it to Dropbox, bought and launched the Aurea application. This is an amazing application. And inside the menu there, I hit Import Audio, and that allowed me to access the Dropbox. And then I basically had the first channel strip there associated with my drum loop. All right, then I also added a click track, and then I set up track three to record the bass. And this is what was so cool about this process for the bass, is if you listen, you just really can hear the tactile nature of my fingertips hitting the strings. I mean, I've never had a better recording of this bass. And again, because I had the drum loop and the click, and I could hear things so clearly because of the A to D conversion and the mic piece, it enabled me to get what I felt was a very strong track. So let's take a listen. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So next up, I tracked my Nash Telly, which is just a great sounding guitar, especially in the studio. So I set up the fourth channel strip for that instrument, and I will add that neither that guitar nor the bass had any plugins inside Aurea, although I was using the soft limiting inside Maestro, which again, just provides a limit on it. It's not a compressor, you don't hear it grab or feel it grab, it just keeps things from getting into an overage. All right, again, this is the Nash Telly, totally clean. <laughs> So for the next track, I really wanted to do something that was going to complement what was happening with the Telecaster. So I panned the Tele to one side and the Strat to the other, and then I added the built-in chorus inside Aurea to kind of make it sound when I slid down the neck like a B3 player kind of going down the keys like that. Great sounding chorus. Let's take a listen. <laughs> For the distorted track, I used Positive Grid's Jam Up plugin, and I used a tread plate model, which is basically a Mesa Boogie, and then a Boss Delay and Boss Reverb model, and they just really allowed the guitar to just sit in that perfect place in the track. Tweaked it a little bit, but not too much. And what's really cool, at one point you hear me slide down the neck, you can actually hear the frets underneath my fingertips as I do that slide. It's a lot of fun. Let's take a listen. <laughs> So that gets us to the end of the video. Hope you've enjoyed watching. This has been an awful lot of fun. For more information on the Apogee Quartet, including where you can find an authorized dealer, please visit GearTunes.com. Cheers.